Bueno, mi gente, bienvenidos a Exprésate TV. Estamos con una persona muy joven que está captando y capturando e implantando mucho, mucha fuerza en su career. Y voy a hacer que él mismo se introduzca. So I'm going to let him introduce himself to you all so you can listen from, you know, from him. What's going on, my brother? Tell the cameras, you know what I'm saying? Hey, how you doing, y'all? I'm with Benjamin right now in the YouTube space. My name is Darnell King. I'm a producer, I'm an artist as well, and if you don't know, I'm on BT's new show, Hustle in Brooklyn, which is out on demand right now. You can check it out. My brother, thank you for coming. Thank you very much. How do you like the space, man? Yo, first of all, when I walked in the building and I came in, right off the elevator, I saw the camera room, and I was like, yo, that's, that's dope. I like, I'm in the cameras and all that. And then I walked in here and I saw these speakers, and I'm like, yeah, I feel at home. I, feel, I really feel at home, you know? When you say feel at home, like, what, what kind of atmosphere, like what, what, what are emotions do you, do you get? Well, just walking in this room, you know, it gives me the studio vibe. You know, I see the two speakers, I see the, you know, the LED um, TVs up and, you know, the, the desk with the, with the board over there. So I'm very familiar with this atmosphere. This is where I live at. This is where I create. So whenever I see speakers, I always like look at what kind of speakers they are. Are they active? Are they passive speakers? You know, or, you know, stuff like that, like, you know. You really detail with with your equipment. Yeah, very detailed, very detailed. What um, how how did this love come in into your how did this love and your and role come into your life? I really don't know, perhaps where it started, but I I my my, my memory goes back to my mother, my grandmother, and she had a record player, a really really old record record player that never worked, and um, I just always wanted to figure out how to fix it, so I would you know. My mother and father don't know that, but I would always play with it and try to like mess with the wires and the wiring. And I realized it, it did work. It just the the power cord wasn't wasn't up. <laughs> so when I realized that, I'm like, and, it, and and I heard the sound coming out of a vinyl uh, record player. I was like, wow, I want to I want to do music. I had to be about six or seven at the time. Yeah. Six or seven. Yeah. So you, that was like the, the moment you realized music was going to be a, a path you were going to take? Yeah, yeah. Because you know, um, you know, like when you play a record player and the needle hits the, the record, you can, and you put your ear to it, you can actually hear the audio without it coming through the speakers. So to me, that was amazing. Like, I would literally just spin the record with my finger just to slow it up and slow it down and you know, and then I realized this is where sampling came in from. You know, when you, sp you speed it up and you slow it, you know, chop and screw it, that just did something to my brain. And it's just been, ever since then, I've just been addicted to, you know. Are, are, you, are you like individual, like uh, when you hear music, do you see images? Yes, I see, I see colors, actually. Mm. Um, my mind works so, so creatively that if I hear something one time, I don't have to hear it again. I can, I, it's, it's stuck in my memory. Even the key, which, it, which it's playing in. And you know, um, that's something that I, I learned from my father, because he's a musician as well. So just, just being born in a musical family um, and just hearing music and seeing sounds and feeling textures and, and creating like that, that's, that's what I do with music, like suede, how suede is smooth, how, you know, like concrete is rugged. And that's how I, I, I do my music. Like, textures in order in order for you to 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 say things like that it must it must also mean that you have a a love for what life is yeah. and you um you uh, respect and you uh, appreciate every your surroundings yeah. so um how how's, how are, are you uh, incorporating that into your current career because i know you're doing a lot yeah. Yeah. and you know how how are you able to um use that to uh, be a role in, in your current career? Standing. Well, that's a good question. Um, I think the emotion of music to me is what really make, drives me to make music for people and not just myself. Because, um, like, you know, you just travel on a train and you, you see homeless people and you see people who are less fortunate. And, you know, everybody had a dream at a certain point in their life, you know? It's just that the dreams were deferred just because of life choices and life circumstances that are out of our control. So even when I make music, I like to I like to listen to my music on the subway because I get in the environment of like if I didn't have this where would I be? Like just to get in the emotion if I'm listening to a beat just to see what people are going through. And then um 
I will always like listen to sounds like in the street, like cab noises and birds chirping and water splashing and stuff like that and just try to imagine someone else listening to it and having that emotion that I'm feeling. Just trying to transfer my emotion through, 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 through waveforms, through sonic, sonic fields, you know? So that's how I create. And your heart is also the same way? Are you like people people who know you could say like he's a also a, you know? I would hope so. I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I definitely think about others before I think about myself. And I try to carry, you know, my team and show them what I've been through cuz I traveled a lot. I've I've been in this game a long time from from the bottom. Like I started on the street team at Def Jam and I worked my way up and I learned that I wanted to do music. I just didn't know how to do it. Like, I, I was in love with it, but I, I didn't know the technical side of it. So that's why I'm in love with, the, with, 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 with technology. Because the analog and the digital bridging that two together is where we need to have it so people can get it. Because, you know, this right here is nothing until it goes through this. And mm -hmm. then, the ears, right. the observer. Right. So how do we get you to feel this through the cameras? And that's through these, through speakers. So learning those frequencies is something that's so crazy to me. I, I could talk about it all day, but. <laughs> no, that's, that's great. Um, and BET, what is, what, when, you, when you hear BET right now, what could you say about it? Like... Love BET, BET is a family. BET um, gave me a chance to show my, showcase my talent to the world. Um, and you know, it was a reality series that they really didn't control. We controlled the narrative. So everything on that show was correct. Like, you know, you know, other people, they added, you know, their little sauce on it and, you know, made it into TV, which is TV. But I was being honest throughout the whole process. And um, I'm paying for that now, you know, because of music and family and stupid decisions I, I, you know, I made going along the way. So. Um, I love it, and I, at the same time, I kind of hate it. <laughs> How, um, what's the latest project right now that, that you know, you're, you're working on? Um, well, I'm working on my project, which is um, unheard of, because I haven't been working on my own musical project for about, since 2012. So, me coming back as an artist and a producer, people are just waiting for it. They just, they want to know what, I, what I'm going to do, what it's going to sound like. So that's, that's what I'm working on right now. And I got a few other things in the works, you know, with other, with other artists. And you don't feel like that absent time is, uh, is kind of affecting you because... It definitely does. Yeah. yeah, it's like, you know, when you get out the gym and you come back, you're going to be rusty. But one thing you never forget is how to ride a bike. You never forget that. So once I'm in the environment and the mic turns on, I, I turn into somebody else. Do you have a, a team? that's really supportive of you right now? Like, what can you say about your team? Well, um, I got new management. You know, they came in and um, they've been going full storm ever, ever since day one. And um, really putting the plays together to really make it monumental. Um, I also have some other guys from my team at the studio who, without them, I won't be able to move. Got my guy Tony Manchin with me. He's a DJ, he does everything. He's security, he's the guy, my guy Lou. B.I., um, Gary, you know, we're making it happen, you know? If, if, if somebody was to ask you, like, you know, your passion, you know, your, when you wake up, your motivation, you know, who, who are you trying to impact the most with your, you know, with your, the, the, what powers you? Well, this is the thing. Um, I, I've, I come from a place where we don't have too many people that are super successful that you can actually reach and touch. But fortunately, I was the one of the, the guys who were able to meet my idols and work with them. For example, Jay-Z, he's a couple blocks from me. I, I was able to intern at Def Jam and have conversations with him. He knows who I am. And that moved into me actually working on Rock Nation on a project that he had to clear. So he definitely knows who I am. And you know, those guys like Diddy and Mace, Mace is one of the guys who took me under his wing. I don't know if you know Bad Boy. Yeah, so Mace is like, he was my mentor. He showed me how to put music together, not just for myself. Like Jay, Jay said, he knows the business of music. 
a lot of artists don't know the business and they have to understand that there's a business and you have to you know have a price and you have to your your value right. you know and right. what kind of what kind of things have they you've learned from them i've learned that you know if you want something you have to definitely be stern about it and you just have to know your value i mean a lot of people shoot for things that they're not worth and it doesn't it don't relate because it's like you don't have a track record you don't have anything proven what's your success record what have you done what are you currently doing and your value can decrease to, depending on your, your personality as well. And we're in a business where you don't have to even have a lot of numbers. They could just love you. They love your personality. And then, you know, you have someone who has millions of followers, but their personality is, isn't, isn't, isn't correct. So that's what I'm learning as well. Like just being a people person, being a businessman, and also thinking, thinking ahead. Like, thinking ahead of the curve. Like, what is music going to be like next year? Like, what, the young kids, uh, the young generation now are, are running things. The little Uzis, the little pumps, you know, Young Thug down south, Migos, love all their music. Um, it's just about how do we fit in with them and still keep your essence. Like, I'm from New York, so I don't want to sound like no down south dude. I don't want to sound like New York. Down south sound like down south, and I think like, Jay-Z and his motto and his mind frame and, and Diddy and how they, they did music for everyone, but they kept their essence. So that's my focus right now, you know, being a businessman, being an artist, and not letting anybody tell me I can't be those. Because you see it, you see it happening. You see Diddy was an artist and he was a CEO. Jay-Z was an artist and a CEO. So why can't, why can't I be an artist and a CEO, you know? Even like Kanye, when he says that you have to have like a power and you have to be a CEO in order in this age to even have a voice. Right, right. You know, so how you saying you're working on a lot of things? What, how, uh, what kind of CEO moves are you making right now? Well, I have my own company called Brickhouse Studios, um, B K E N T, which was highlighted on um, Hustle in Brooklyn. So my company, my studio, is worldwide. So, you know, a lot of people, when they come to New York, they want to come to my studio to work with me. And that's the, that's the thing, because I'm not always at the studio. I'm not there a lot. So, you know, people want to work with DDD, but my company is a group of talented individuals, just not me, that you could work with. But, you know, a lot of people are attached to a name, your brand. Because I'm on BT, because I'm with Bad Boy, because I'm with Rock Nation, Dev Jam. You know, people like the clout chase. And half the time, they haven't even listened to my music. They just know my name. That's what really gets me upset. It's like, you wanna, they want to be around me, but they don't know my sound. They don't know if I'm even good or not. Like, some people could want an Audi. And, because they, you know, they just heard it like, oh, the Audi's dope, you know? Yeah, exactly. And when they get on it, they don't even know they the like power. It. They don't even know the power they're sitting on. Or sometimes you even see an Audi that people want to have, they love it, and the person taking care of it's like... They treat it like, yeah. And you look at it, you're like, oh, I would die for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I will, like, it's, it's crazy because sometimes, like, I, I think also, like, you know, with being a CEO and trying to be successful, you could have a Honda, a 1995 Honda Civic at a light, and there's two, a couple, and they're smiling. Yeah. And they're having fun, you know, and... Yeah. And then you, a Beamer pulls up next to him, and they could be sad. Yeah, that's you know, wild. so it's that's like true. that's true. And then you look at it, and you're like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. Sometimes it, we adapt, right, to the moment, you know. Right, right. Has has that impacted you, or you being humble? No, no, no. That was that was crazy. You said that, bro. That was crazy. You said that. You just actually took me back to a, a time where I was doing street team. And I couldn't even afford a dollar slice. And then we would be walking by like the Chinese store and we'll see like people eating Chinese food and we like, what are we working for? We you eating Chinese food a week old? Yeah, I'm eating Chinese food a week yeah, old. You know? I mean, you know, you gotta really humble yourself. Cause Sometimes you, you, I mean, I've done it too because you know, you, I think it's, it's a learning experience, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's kind of it's a bittersweet thing because you know we're in the entertainment industry where everything's glitz and glamour. So you know a lot of the artists 
they want to live a certain way, but they don't. They drive in the Honda. But then the CEO who signed them is driving a Bentley. And you know, your intellectual work and the stuff that you're putting into, we don't own none of that. That's why I wanted to get into the business aspect side of things and own what I was doing because I don't want to just be an artist that 15 years from now I don't have any, you know, royalties or rights or publishing is messed up. I don't, I don't want to, I want to, I want my music to be protected. I want all artists' music to be protected. And we, we fall into the, we fall into the, the area of the check. Throw a million dollars at you. We ain't never seen a million dollars before. Our moms is living in the projects. We, we can't, we can't even eat every week. We, we live in paycheck to paycheck. They throw that money at you. They making way more. They making 12 times that. You making a million, but you know, it's a, it, it's, it's a hard situation because it's like, do I take it or do I leave it? It's a learning process. So, it's just you know, it's just the time we're in. The art, the art is really being taken out because of finance. So, we gotta we gotta try to fix that if we can. <laughs> Definitely and. There's a, the online, you know, it's like a different world now with sales and, you know, and... Um... Nobody's buying, you know, more vinyl records were sold last year than actual iTunes downloads. Like, more money was made off of a vinyl records being sold than people downloading songs. Nobody's downloading music. Everybody's streaming music. Why do I have to download a song now? When I have Tidal, I have I, I, um, um, the iTunes Store, well, I forgot, Apple Music, yeah, Spotify. So, it's a lot of money there, but nobody's owning no music. Because once you stop your subscription, you don't own, you don't, that, that library is gone. So, it's crazy how fast you can make money in this era. And... It's so sad how music is being consumed at a fast pace and it's not really being you know, But also charity. also you think that um like you say fast. It's being consumed fast. Do you think as fast as being consumed is also being forgotten? Yeah. Quickly. Very quickly. So you're shooting for classics, I bet. I mean you've been you're surround you've um, you've been blessed to be surrounded by classics yeah. and, and people, you know, who are still relevant. Yeah. And who are making those CEO moves? Right. So, you, you shooting to make content that's gonna last for years? I definitely am. I definitely am shooting for content to last for years, even like movie-wise, movie scores, because movies last a little bit longer than albums. And then you can c collaborate with your music on the movie to do the soundtrack. So, like musical scores like that is what I'm getting into. Um, but I'm also doing music that's fast food. I'm doing, I make fast food music as well. Fast food? Yeah. Because. I mean, people are changing so time. quick. That's the time we're in right now. People are changing so quick. One day they love him, one day they hate him. So, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's incredible. We got a lot of music coming. Yeah. You got your projects. Yeah. You got your CEO moves. Yeah. What else, you gonna, what else people are going to expect from you? Man? Um. Well, you know, I was blessed to be able to have a son. Um, his name is Ashton. Um, I see a lot of myself in him. He loves music. Uh, <laughs> Baby Shark. Every, is, you know the craze? Every time I sing Baby Shark, he, he loves melody. So it doesn't matter if it's Baby Shark or if it's something else. If I sing to him or if I hum to him, he, he looks at me. Um, so I definitely want to teach him what I learned late. Like with music wise and how to how to create it and um if he loves to do it i would definitely support him but i just want to um just be aware of family and how how precious life is and how how short of a life we have so whatever dream that you have just just don't give it up for a nine to five if you can survive off of a nine to five to do your dream then do it because when you get old and you know, you can't walk or you can't really talk like that. You'll have something that your, your kids could look at, like, oh, my dad did this, my mom did this. So I, I'm keeping that in my mind as far as, like, legacy and time frame that we have on this earth because, you know, life isn't 
grand is forever, you know? So, that's something that I'm on my so, mind. So, that's incredible you say that you have to keep going because, you know, I think people, some people are missing that push mm -hmm. to follow their dreams. Because if they throw you in the jungle with no food and no equipment, you're forced to adapt, to adapt and, make, and make food for you so you can survive. Some people want to be filmmakers, they want to be artists, they have the 9 to 5, but they don't want to jump right. and, and be able to make money from music. Yeah. Because they're scared, they're scared of, of you know, of that nine to five. They're scared, they're, they're scared to just let go and and actually get the best out of right. it. I'm, how I'm, how have you? I'm not a see. I'm not afraid to be broke. I'm not afraid. I've I've been broke. I'm still out here hustling. Even though I'm on TV, I'm still every day. I'm getting to it. I'm not rich. I don't have millions. I, I mean, I'm I'm day to day. If I don't if I don't produce, it's over. But I I definitely have things in play that I'm that I make money off of. So you know, with music, you you can get a check today. It could be big, and then next week you gotta live off that check you got last week. You know, so how do we how do we have some stability? You know what I mean? You have merch, you have different streams of income that you do outside of music. I do fashion, I do all that. So I'm just not a musician. I do TV, I do all that. So I have multiple streams of income, and at the same time, I'm working on things. For next next summer to push out so um you have to be aware of what you want to be in life you can't just just you have to be either the train conductor or you on the train you're gonna be you're gonna be the pilot or you're gonna be a passenger you're gonna be the driver you're gonna you gotta be the driver and if your team is like-minded they're gonna be in the car with you and everybody's gonna be doing something in that car he's gonna be taking pictures of the road he's like yo we'll be getting something to eat He's gonna be the navigator. You know what I mean? Everybody gotta be on the same page. You can't do it by yourself. You one, definitely one of the best lines. I'm not scared of being broke. Yeah, not. Nah. And that's 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 a, that's you know that's that's a great line that we gotta we gotta push this. Because right. bottom line, you know, you are uh, like all the other other fellows that came and um, that sit that sit in that seat. You know, they all have that uh, motivation. You know, and that hunger and. Right. That's, that's, that's a perfect example that they're not scared of being broke. And I want to so. say one more thing too. You, 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 people have jobs, nine to fives, right? And then they make good money, but they're stuck in the, in the, in the, in the, in the nine to five that they hate. And then they wonder why am I depressed? Why is my life not going the way I want it to? Because someone else is dictating when you come to work, which is fine. But the time that you have for yourself, which you have off, and you get some overtime, they're like, nah, I'm going back, I'm going to make some more money, instead of following your dream. See, the money is not the motive. You're going to make money. Every, you're going to make money doing anything. Selling drugs, you're going to make money. Selling water, you're going to make money. Going to work, you're going to make money. What are you going to do with your time, your personal time, to be happy and, and, and make money that you love to earn without the stress? And I see a lot of my friends giving up because of their fiance, their wife, their mother and father, and they're scared to be alone. You gotta put the mask on first say, before you put the mask to the person next to you. You gotta say, I gotta live for myself. Even though we're together, if you don't, if we don't, can't coexist and learn how to live together and have a dream and, and follow what we wanna do, then we're both gonna fight, bump heads, I'm gonna be miserable, we're not gonna be happy. Don't let people sway your dreams. Don't. I know it's cliche, everybody says this, but I didn't do that. I figured it out. I got an internship, I was working, I talked to CEOs, I started really working on projects and giving them to people like, yo, this is what I'm working on and be serious and take care of the business and get paid. And then everything started opening up for me. I got on TV. I didn't even know I was going to get on TV. They just came looking for me. On Instagram, they hit me on Instagram like, yo, I thought it was fake. But I've been putting in work a lot, so I followed my heart. And then I, I'm so, like, I thank God that he actually opened that door for me. Because I, I was like, yo, what the hell am I going to do? Like, I built a studio. It's been a year. I got clients coming in, but ain't nothing big happening. Boom. Got a DM. Got an email.
MTV hit me, BET hit me. So they stay, people are watching. This internet thing is real. <laughs> <laughs> so, the cameras are all everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I had to say. My brother, thank you for coming and, and sharing your testimony to, you know. Ben, I'm, ben thank like you. I, I say it's going to take years and years ahead that this we're going to actually appreciate everything that um, we're laying, you know, and mm -hmm. letting people tell. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, Ben. We're definitely going to have you. Uh-huh. You know, more projects. Hey, yeah. I'm coming back first. Performances, you know. Yeah, yeah. YouTube, it's it's uh, you know, I, we thank YouTube for, for this, you know. Yeah. For this uh, help and being able to share this platform with with you know creative people like you, creators, because we all creators. You yeah, know? yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate. It. All right.